Hey, sunshine and happiness surround you when you're far from home. And may you grow to be proud, dignified and true. And do unto others as you'd have done to you. Be courageous and be brave. And in my heart, you'll always stay. Forever young, forever young. May good fortune be with you. May your guiding light be strong. Build a stairway to Everything between us is good. I'm riding this cloud, baby. Ready to fly, but before I take another step, would you catch me if I fall for you? Cause I. I'm falling, I'm falling. I'm so used to standing, I'm so used to being on my own. But this thing is new, baby. It feels like I'm losing control. I'll take another step. Catch me when I fall for you, 'cause I'm falling. Well, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. We have come rejoicing into the house of the Lord for this celebration, dear brothers and sisters. Now we stand with Jaron and Brittany on the day they intend to form a home of their own. For them, this is a moment of unique importance. So let us support them with our affection, with our friendship, and with our prayer as their brothers and sisters. Let us listen attentively with them to the word that God speaks to us today. Then, with Holy Church. Let us humbly pray that God the Father, through Christ our Lord, for this couple, His servants, that He lovingly accept them, bless them, and make them always one. Be attentive to our prayers, O Lord, and in Your kindness, pour out Your grace on these Your servants, Jaron and Brittany, that coming together before Your altar, they may be confirmed in love for one another through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the scriptures. Where one alone 
may be overcome, two together can resist. A three-five cord is not easily broken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm response is from Psalm 148, and I ask you to say, Praise the Lord, after each refrain. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let heaven pr praise the Lord. Praise him, heavenly heights. Praise him, all you his angels. Praise him, all his armies. Praise the Lord. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, shining stars. Praise him, highest heavens and waters above the heavens. Praise the Lord. Mountains and hills, orchards and forests, wild animals and farm animals, snakes and birds. Praise the Lord. All kings on earth and nations, princes, all rulers in the world, young men and girls, old maid and child, old people and children too. Praise the Lord. Let them all praise the name of the Lord. For his name is no other is sublime, transcending earth and heaven, in majesty raising the fortunes of his people. Praise the Lord. The second reading is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with a word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus offered this prayer. I pray not only for them, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, so that they may be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And I have given them the glory you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be brought to perfection as one, that the world may know that you sent me and that you love them even as you loved me. Father, they are your gift to me. I wish that where I am they also may be with me, that they may see my glory that you gave me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world also does not know you, but I know you, and they know that you sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will make it known to them, that the love with which you love me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord this is the what we call a marriage exhortation. Dear friends in Christ, as you know, you're about to enter into a union which is most sacred and most serious. A union which was established by God. And this way, God sanctified human love and enabled man and woman to help each other live as children of God by sharing a common life under God's loving care. Because God is thus its author, marriage is, by its very nature, a holy institution, requiring of those who enter into it a complete 
and unreserved giving of self. This union then is most serious because it will bind the two of you together for life in a relationship so close and so intimate that will profoundly influence your whole future. That future with its hopes and its disappointments, its successes and its failures, its pleasures and its pains, its joys and its sorrows is hidden from your eyes at this moment. You know well that these are elements mingled in every life and are to be expected in your own. And so not knowing what is before you, you take each other for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health until death. These words then are most serious and it is a beautiful tribute to your undoubted faith in each other that recognizing what they mean you are nevertheless so willing and so ready to pronounce them. And because these words involve such solemn obligations, it's most fitting that you rest the security of your wedded life on the great principle of self-sacrifice. And so today you begin your married life by the voluntary and complete surrender of your individual lives in that interest of that deeper and wider life which you two are to have in common. Henceforth, you belong entirely to each other. You will be one in mind, one in heart, and one in affections. And whatever sacrifices you may hereafter be required to make to preserve the common life that you have, always make them generously. There will be problems. Such might be difficult, but genuine love can make them easy perfect love can make them a joy. We are willing to give in proportion as we love, and when love is perfect, the sacrifice is complete. God so loved the world that he gave himself for our salvation. And greater love than this no one has than to lay down their lives for another. No greater blessing can come to your married life than pure conjugal love, loyal and true to the end. May this love then, with which you join your hands and hearts today, never fail, but grow deeper and stronger as the years go on. And if true love and the unselfish spirit of perfect sacrifice guide all your actions, you too can expect the greatest measure of earthly happiness that may be allotted on this earth. The rest is in the hands of God, nor will God be wanting to your needs. God will pledge you a lifelong support of his graces in this sacrament which you are now going to receive. I invite Jaron and Brittany now and their witnesses to come forward and stand before the altar. Jaron and Brittany, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? Since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. Let's start with you, Jaron. Repeat it to me. I, Jaron Lewis, take you, Brittany Brown, to be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love you and to honor you all the days of my life. All the days of my life. I, Brittany Brown, I, Brittany Brown take you, Jaron Lewis, take you, John Lewis, to be my husband. To be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you. To love you and to honor you all the days of my life. 
May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessings within you. What God joins together, let no one put asunder. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we have the exchange and blessing of the rings. May the Lord bless these rings, which you will give to each other as a sign of your love and fidelity. Brittany, receive these rings. Brittany, receive these rings. Brittany, receive these rings. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Brittany, if you want to take his rings. Jaron, receive this ring. Jaron, receive these rings. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Graciously pour out upon this husband and wife, O Lord, the Spirit of your love, to make them one heart and one soul, so that nothing whatever may divide those you have joined, and no harm come to those you have filled with your blessing, through Christ our Lord. And I take Now we have the nuptial blessing. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to the Lord that on these his servants now married in Christ, he may mercifully pour out the blessing of his grace and make of one heart in love these that he has joined in holy covenant. O God, who by your mighty power created all things out of nothing, and when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe, formed man and woman in your own image, making the woman an inseparable helpmate to the man, that they might no longer be two but one flesh, and taught that what you were pleased to make one must never be divided. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ and his bride, the church. O God, by whom woman is joined to man, and the companionship they had in the beginning is endowed with the one blessing not forfeited by original sin, nor washed away by the flood. Look now with favor on these your servants, joined together in marriage, who ask to be strengthened by your blessing. Send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit, and pour your love into their hearts, that they may remain faithful <coughs> in their marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter, Brittany, and let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. May her husband entrust his heart to her so that acknowledging her as his equal and his joint heir to the life of grace, he may show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his bride, the church. And now, Lord, we implore you, may these servants hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments made one in the flesh. May they be blameless in all they do, and with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they bear true witness to Christ before all. May they be blessed with children and prove themselves virtuous parents who live to see their children's children, and grant that reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope, they may come to a blessed life with you in the kingdom of heaven. And we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May Christ, who is our peace, grant you peace at all times and in all ways. And as Jaron and Brittany exchange their first kiss as husband and wife, they've obviously kissed before, <laughs> let us offer each other a sign of peace.
That was pretty good. <laughs> I don't think my prayer had anything to do with that. <laughs> All right, we're almost through. Let us show our support and friendship for this newly married couple, Jaron and Brittany Lewis. Before we depart, I ask that this congregation now stand and join me in a final solemn blessing by extending your right hands toward Jaron and Brittany as I invoke a final blessing upon them. May God, the Eternal Father, keep you of one heart in love for one another, that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. May you be witnesses in the world to God's love and goodness, so that the afflicted and the needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling place of God. And may Almighty God bless you all who have gathered here in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And now let us go in peace, celebrating God's everlasting love. Thanks be to God. You could kiss again if you want, but you don't have to.
Mm-hmm.